Okay, now we've got the speed. Can we do it? <laughs> Hello everybody. Happy March 32nd. Today we're looking at an age-old question. Do I need a joystick to fly in DCS? Or could I use something that I just have laying around, like an Xbox controller, or maybe an Atari gamepad, or a Roland TD11KV electronic drum kit? And today, we're going to take a look at whether or not we can fly the AH-64D Apache helicopter with this thing. So I've gone ahead and uh, with a MIDI to USB cable, I've mapped all of these different inputs to the game. And each one does a different thing. So we've got this map to cyclic bank left, cyclic bank right, anti-torque left, anti-torque right, collective down, collective up nose down, and nose up. The snare drum is left for something as a surprise that you'll see uh, in a few minutes. Alright, so without any further ado, let's hop into the cockpit and see if we can actually fly this thing with a set of drums. And if you want to do this yourself, if you've got a similar setup at home, stick around to the end of the video. I'll show you everything you need to uh, recreate this. Alright, have fun. All right, well, let's see if we can fly an Apache with a drum kit. So to do that, it's more or less the exact same as if we had a Cyclic and a Collective in front of us, just instead of moving a joystick around with our hands, we've got to whack the drums with a stick instead. Um, so yeah, it's in the Apache, it's fairly straightforward to trim yourself for takeoff. There's really not anything fancy going on with the mast. So you really just bring in some left Cyclic bank to counteract that translating tendency, which kind of pushes you off to the right all the time when you're in the air. A little bit of that, again nothing fancy, and a little bit of left anti-torque because the counterclockwise spinning main rotor in this helicopter, which is backwards for what I'm used to, um, will be constantly trying to bring your nose to the right, so you're bringing it back with the anti-torque and keeping it where you want it. Uh, we've got our collective over here, so we're going to start bringing that up, and as we do we'll need a little more left anti-torque, but that should be about it. The big thing to keep in mind is that we don't want a dynamic rollover. So once we get light on wheels, we want to kind of move quickly into getting off the ground and not stick around for too long there because at that point, it's very easy for that tail rotor to push you right and have the whole thing just tip over. Or for you to have too much um, left anti-torque in and just to tip over the other way. So it, any situation where you've only got one wheel on the ground is pretty scary. All right, now we're going to start bringing in a bunch more power and we should be able to get off the ground. up just a little, bring in more power, try to recover this, there we go, okay, <laughs> that was uh, not great, <laughs> that was uh, wonderful, one of my best takeoffs in a long time I think, all right, <laughs> So the nice thing about the Apache is I've got all the symbology of a modern HUD right in front of me. So I can see the ball, I don't have to look at tiny little instruments. I'm staring at a TV screen across the room. Um, and it's actually fairly challenging to fly the other helicopters with steam gauges from that distance. Yeah, let's get our nose down. We'll bring it up a little and drop our collective. I do want to go this way, but I kind of want to stay lower to the ground. I don't really want to be at like 500 feet all the time. It's no fun. Okay, so after a pretty squirrely takeoff, we're up and we're kind of stabilized. And at this point, flying the helicopter and managing it with the drums is fairly straightforward. Let's do that. A little more collective. There. 
Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you'll kind of do together. These two group together, these two group together, these two group together, if you're accelerating anyway. And then, of course, uh, for decelerating, it's a little bit of... A little bit of nose up and reduce collective. And then to accelerate, it's just these two. There, go. there it is, there's my smoke. Let's go see if we can hit something. So I'm reducing collective and then right anti-torque to correct for the nose wanting to go left. So again, you can do that. I got one of them, maybe. <laughs> I'll take it. Let's get out of here. More power. Kick the ball. Get ourselves turning. There we go. <laughs> well, I mean, I hit a few things. Right? Maybe? I don't know. Oh, all right. Go try to land, but in the meantime, <laughs> that's great. It's possibly the most satisfying way to shoot rockets. There we go. All right, so now we just need to start slowing down. not to let it get too far in any direction, really, because it takes a long time to make corrections to go back and forth, so I really need a fairly stabilized approach, which I don't really have. Was uh, smoother than I expected. Zero ourselves out here. Basically set up for turn or for takeoff again. All right, we actually made it down. No way. I'm shocked. <laughs> not quite on the runway. Not quite where I wanted to be, but also not on fire. And 
I guess that's probably the most important part. So there you go. Uh, proof that you can fly a helicopter with any controller. You don't need a joystick or a throttle. You just need some kind of controller. And it'll work as long as you've got enough inputs to map. And of course a little patience and maybe some insanity helps too. Welcome to the part of the video where I show you how to do the dumb thing I just did today. So if you've got a drum kit, an electronic drum kit at home, and it's got a MIDI out somewhere on it, so you can plug in a MIDI cable to it, this should work for you. The only thing you need to buy is a MIDI to USB cable. I bought this one. It's the Roland UM1 Mark II. It's kind of their official MIDI to USB cable. It's been around forever. Um, there are cheaper ones you could definitely buy. Uh, they should work too give one a try. I just went with this one because I happen to have a Roland drum kit, so I bought the matching kind. So once you have the cable plugged into your computer, you can basically send MIDI signals from your drum brain to the computer. But the next problem is that they won't show up as a virtual controller. They won't show up as like a, a gamepad or anything that you could just go into DCS and map directly. So the next problem is how do we do that? Well, we need two different pieces of software and then one script, and I'll share all of that with you. So the first one is VJoy, or Virtual Joystick, and specifically version 2.1.8. Um, once you have that installed, you can set it up. It looks a little bit like this. So with VJoy installed, you just need to create a virtual device. And I've got one there. I've given it 16 buttons, no axes, just a nice simple thing. Um, and for my purposes, that's all I need. Now, the other problem here is that while this creates a device that DCS can see, and you can bind buttons from it, we still have to solve the problem of mapping from MIDI to this virtual device. And we do that using FreePy. And this is a look at FreePy. Uh, FreePy allows you to take inputs from one kind of device and sort of map them as if they were inputs from another kind of device. So we're watching for MIDI inputs here, and whenever we detect a MIDI on for any note, we map it to the corresponding VJoy button and set that to true. Then we wait for a very short time and then unpress the button effectively. Um, I've set up a mapping here. So on the left side, like 38 is the MIDI out for my snare and I've mapped that to VJoy button zero. 48 for my tom and one. And then tom two, uh, those are my two rack toms, then my floor tom, hi-hat symbol, and basically all the way down the list. Um, with this script in place, all you do is just Go to script, run script, and now every time you hit something on the drum kit, it will map that to VJoy, and you'll see it light up over here. So with all that in place, the only thing that's left to do is go back into DCS and map it as normal. So we just go into our controls menu, pick the helicopter or whatever it is you want to fly, and then just type in, for example, cyclic. And you'll get, you don't want the axis because we're using buttons, you want the uh, button bindings for bank left, bank right, nose down, nose up. And you just go through and bind them like you normally would. It shows up in the columns here as VJoy device. And you just come in here and then whack the button you want, or you can pick from the drop down. And you just go through and do that for all your flight controls. So you need cyclic, all four, bank left, bank right, nose down, nose up. You need, and of course they call it rudder. They shouldn't, they should call it anti-torque. Uh, but there it is, you need left and right. And you need your collective. Collective stick down and up. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can fly with that. So with that, you have everything you need to fly. Uh, just make sure that you have FreePy running, that VJoy is enabled as well, um, and that the script is running. Come over here, bind your controls, and away you go. Highly recommend you use the controls indicator overlay, the right control and enter to pop that up so you can see where your controls are, uh, because you will have no visual reference of any kind whatsoever. So with that, good luck. Hope you guys enjoyed. The link to that script in my GitHub will be in the description, along with a bunch of other stuff, so check that out, and uh, have a good one.